Hello everyone. Good morning. So today's uh, topic for session is uh, tips to clear CT one. We understand that it's not an easy journey. There are many obstacles, and you have come a long way. So we have specially curated this session for you with Meghna Agarwal. Meghna is a qualified actuary with three plus years of experience in general insurance. Currently, she is working as an actuarial team lead at Accenture. She also secured AIR one in CT four and CT five from A I A I. She has been an active volunteer at I F O A and I E I. She also cleared CT one in her first attempt. She will be sharing her ways and lesson lessons that she used to come this far, and we hope that it will be a very enriching session for all of you all. Um, thank you so much, Meghna Di, for the session. Um, now you can continue with the. session thank you thank you shivangi for the wonderful introduction i hope my voice is clear to all yes it's clear perfect thank you uh so uh, hello everyone very good morning welcome to this session uh thank you for joining in on a sunday morning and uh talking about cp1 yes cp1 is not an easy paper and um i hope i can add some value to your study journey during this uh, session um i am also mentoring the cp1 group in my organization and i have been an exam test candidate for ifoa for cp1 itself so i hope some of my uh, ideas and experience experience can help you through the, uh, with this journey now i'll uh, briefly cover what cp1 is all about uh, it will act as a refresher for you guys as well and then move on to the study tips specifically for cp1 uh, let me share my screen for the same is my screen visible if somebody could confirm yes ma'am not yet okay okay i think i'll start yes so um cp1 it covers the uh, technical and business skills that you have already learned uh, when you uh, took your uh, initial papers such as the actuarial statistics uh, uh, business and mathematics papers and it combines those skills with some new material that will introduce and uh, how to apply those skills in actual real world problems and uh, this course uh, forms a good uh, base or foundation for the higher level sp and sa subjects so uh, cp1 covers all the different range of financial products whether it's general insurance or life insurance or pensions and then when you move on to your sp level papers uh, you can choose any particular uh, specific line and uh, plan accordingly now uh, coming to the syllabus topics so this is a document which is available on ifoa website i can add the link to the chat box after the session uh, ends uh, and it will also be available in the youtube video which will be uploaded uh, so this list the various topics that are part of the cp1 curriculum and the weightage that uh, is roughly approximated to each topic uh, so now you can see that the various topics uh, they are kind of equally divided throughout the curriculum and the weightage not only refers to the amount of content that's there within each topic but also uh, to the questions that have been built around the topic in the past or the level of complexity of each topic so as you can see um, uh, uh, risk particularly the entire risk category has a good amount of weightage so that is something that you need to focus on then again the general business environment uh, this has a lot of weightage so this is the area where uh, where you need to apply the skills that you have learned to different financial products and uh, this uh, this particular topic talks about how the contracts or how the products are designed uh, within different lines of business and what considerations are to be kept in mind within each again producing the solution has a 30% weightage so when it comes to producing the solution it means uh, so for example um, if you have gone through the entire cp1 curriculum by now 
a good amount of weightage is placed on uh, modeling for example how to build a cash flow model what is an asset liability model and uh, what are the assumptions to be placed in a model how will the data come into the model all of it so if you are faced with any critical business problem how do you move on to find a solution and how you implement the solution that will come under this area and this again has a huge weightage now uh, the questions may be set at any skill level so this means that uh, throughout the entire paper there will be a few a uh, uh, couple of questions where you can expect uh, some uh, direct uh, uh, application of book work and under, under a particular scenario so uh, for example uh, how can uh, such and such type of company raise capital for its own uh, uh, enterprise uh, something like that and then uh, there will be some questions which will be around higher order thinking or application so for example a particular project will be explained to you and a question will be posed to you how you can calculate the uh, uh, price or how much capital should you set aside something like that wherein you will have to think about the entire model so the questions will be a mix of different skill categories now across cp1 uh, Uh, when it comes to division between knowledge application and higher order skills as you can see 20% is assigned to knowledge 50% application and 30% higher order skills so this is where cp1 differs from the previous uh, uh, initial papers of ifoa uh, because and the initial papers are a little in, uh, knowledge intensive uh, wherein you are expected to uh, understand and uh, uh, have your book work on your tips but here the focus is more on application and higher order skills it's not just enough that you uh, understand the book work or ha uh, have it in your mind but it's important to tailor your book work and apply it to the particular question that's being asked because that's how you will show uh, your understanding of the business your or your understanding about actual concepts in general now cp1 uh, will have two exams paper 1 and paper 2 both of them uh, are on word and uh, the uh, paper 1 uh, again the uh, classification is a little different the paper 1 it's 30% knowledge 55% application and 15% higher order skills so it's mostly about uh, knowledge and application but paper 2 which is uh, uh, which will be case study intensive that has much more of application and higher order skills being 45% each so i'll be talking about them in detail again now uh, coming to the assessment both of the uh, exam papers will last for 3 hours and 15 minutes and in the la from the last session onwards 5 minutes have been introduced uh, to allow you to download or print the exam material if required uh, for the uh, paper 1 the question usually ranges from 5 to 15 marks so 5 marks could be something as simple as list down something or state something um but 15 marks could be wherein you you are expected to like draft uh, a draft a kind of a model or a build a solution or a risk management approach to any business so uh, the range is quite varied in the paper and um, as i mentioned before it will assess your straight forward application of knowledge paper 2 uh, is also 3 hour 15 minutes but ideally you are supposed to uh, have a 45 minutes planning time and a 2 hours and 30 minutes writing time paper 2 will have uh, usually has two case studies the first case study is usually uh, usually a larger one and for each case study some background material will be given to you and then multiple questions will be given and you need to think your way through each of the question and answer accordingly now each paper will be marked out of 100 and the scores of the two paper will be aggregated or totaled and it's not like you have to pass any individual paper or uh, achieve a minimum marks on individual paper it's totally on an aggregate basis so even uh, so uh, if one of your papers goes very well you can uh, slightly afford that your other paper might not go that well that's okay as long as your aggregate threshold is reaching the passing marks now uh, one question that really bothers uh, people about cp1 is that what if they are not uh, they do not have the technical acumen of a particular line of business or what if they are not even working uh, when they to, when then they are taking the exam so will that be an obstacle so 
no that will not be an obstacle because this paper does not require you to have technical knowledge around any particular product or line it's more about how you apply the concepts and the material that has already been introduced and your general understanding of the business and the environment and in fact even common sense to uh, apply those in the actual exam so uh, talking about myself i have always been in the general insurance domain so even when i took the cp1 test uh, i had to uh, go through the life insurance and pensions part of it which was completely new to me so and i did not have any technical knowledge in these areas so uh, i can assure you that would not be an obstacle in your case okay now uh, for those who are planning to take the cp1 exam uh, in the upcoming sessions i'll just like to briefly point out that the recommended study hours is uh, as given by ifo it's 400 which is roughly double those uh, those of the initial cs and cm level exams so you can understand the uh, amount of curriculum that's there for cp1 and the amount of efforts that you need to put in for cp1 and also uh, the fees it's uh, 350 pounds under the reduced rate now i'll move on to the uh, tips for the exam paper and how to crack the exam so firstly uh, read the question very carefully i know it might sound uh, pretty lame and quite obvious when i say it but no i cannot stress how important this is because uh, it has been a recurring problem in the uh, examiner reports that have been given given by ifo over the last sessions that while the candidate has the not looks like while the candidate has the knowledge of that particular question he or she is not able to tailor the answer to the actual question being asked now why do you need to read the question very carefully so any question it will uh, give you some pointers or some hints on where you need to structure your answer so for example some some words which might seem very harmless are actually quite important so for example if the question talks about uh, a small company or uh, like a, a medium partnership firm so the small or medium it's actually a hint to the answer for example if it if it talks about like a small firm wants to raise its capital so now you cannot in in your answer if you write uh, it should Uh, issue an ipo uh, you will not get any marks because it's a small firm it doesn't make sense for a small firm to issue an ipo right so that's where the hint lies so look for those words which might actually help you to structure your answer and uh, it could be anything a uh, small medium large company or the type of enterprise that's there or whether uh, if whether the environment is a developed environment or a developing environment that could be hint to the answer or uh, or and do uh, figure out what are the stakeholders involved in the uh, question so uh, any person that's included in the question uh, understand that it's there for a reason so you need to structure your answer accordingly is the government involved is the uh, policy holder involved so you need to look for that now uh, talking about this itself so um, Uh, so for cp1 if say your question is uh, specific about uh, so a small firm wants to raise capital now you cannot simply uh, uh, list down points of raising capital like bonds debentures ipo loans stuff like that no you need to tailor your answer to the question so like it's a small firm so it it should be able to uh, get a bank loan uh, with some Uh, guarantee or uh, it's a small firm so it might not be able to raise a uh, uh, raise for equity so it should uh, go this way so you need to tailor your answer to the question as well also um solve a decent amount number of past papers it's more useful for cp1 because uh, since it's not direct book work it's not that you just need to reproduce the knowledge you need to have an idea of how to structure your answer and what each type of question is going to ask so past papers is a very good way to do that you will get a very good idea of uh, if a question is posed this way how do you need to structure your answer this is specifically important for uh, those questions that talk about the actuarial control cycle or about to build a cash flow model or an asset liability model so in those cases uh, the past papers really helped me to understand how to structure my entire answer because 
your answer uh, needs to tell a story like where did you get the data from what were your assumptions what was the process you followed and how did you derive the final conclusion it cannot be in a haphazard manner so uh, the, so the structuring of the answer will really improve once you solve your past papers also command verbs again are very important in cp1 because since it's not direct book work you need to understand what to write and how much to write and again with cp1 uh, there's a recurring problem of time management as well the examiners have noted that towards the later questions uh, candidates tend to uh, feel uh, the tendency that the, uh, the, the, there's a lacking of time so uh, again for time management also command verbs can help so if it's a list or state type question don't go overboard just mention the amount of information that you think is absolutely necessary for that particular question and also look at the marks that are on offer uh because because the higher uh, marking questions uh they usually tend to take a lot of time because you need to plan and structure your answer so uh try to uh, uh i i'll suggest that initially try to you know solve the more straight forward questions so that you have optimum time left for the more uh, application intensive questions also like when you solve the past papers you will notice that there is a pattern in terms of certain topics or questions being asked so for example uh, actuarial control cycle or the modeling questions that i just said or investment strategy so uh, so these are certain questions which are quite repetitive in all the exams although the situation will tend to vary so for example while one question was around general insurance one question could be around life insurance product but the uh, underlying question theme will be similar so these are the areas where you can actually score your marks because uh, you you kind of already expect these questions to come so uh, these are the ones where you can pick your marks and also these are the ones which are usually uh, of a higher marking so what you can do to tackle these questions prepare a checklist in advance uh, so which will have all the pointers that you need to consider so for example if it's a question related to the investment strategy that should be adopted have all the point the check entire, entire checklist ready so it could be uh, so just to give you a, a set of examples the checklist could have the tax consideration or the cost of assets or uh, the diversification need or the amount of assets already available so keep the entire checklist and keep it very handy during your exam and if, let's say you 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 are lucky you got the, you got the question there so you can simply go through the checklist and look at the points which are applicable to that question so going back if it's a small firm uh it cannot uh, really invest in a lot of international equities so go through your checklist look which pointers are actually applicable to the question being asked and include those points in your answer trust me it saves you a lot of time and it saves uh it gives you some confidence because you already have the entire idea list generated you just need to understand what to apply and how to add depth to your answer so it will really help you in during the exam so look for those recurring questions and prepare checklist for those questions and keep them very handy during the exam i mean if it's an online exam and the institute is allowing you to refer to your study material and notes you might as well make good use out of it right so these were the uh, tips that were uh, generally helpful for cp1 uh, now talking about paper 2 specifically so paper 2 uh, is quite different in terms of the structure uh, because it's not like you will get 9 uh, or 10 independent questions and you need to answer them which is usually the case with all the uh, uh, other earlier papers so paper uh, under paper 2 you get two case studies so some background material will be given to you for each case study and then uh, five to six questions uh, uh, based on each case study now when i for says it needs uh, it, it allows 45 minutes of planning time it's upon you now to decide how do you want to uh, plan your paper right now um, uh, at least till it's online uh, so you can uh, uh, either spend the entire 45 minutes uh, initially so uh, again it's not a very clear demarcation it's upon you to decide how do you want to uh, spend between planning and uh, execution so you can spend less than 45 minutes of planning time if you think that fits your need so uh, you can either spend the entire time at the initial and then went, go on to write the entire exam or you can plan the case study one first attempt it and then move on to the next case study 
also you can uh, like plan the general uh, breadth and the structure of the answer initially and leave some time aside because you know that some individual questions might be tricky so you need to think them through so some time will be wasted there uh, also um, so understand that the planning time that's given it's not given because the questions are very tricky or because they are too tough so you need to think your content no they are actually for structuring your answer and to divide your content between the questions so for example um say there is a case study on uh, in which a project has been described and uh, the individual questions they are uh, centered around risk management so the first question asks what are uh, identify some of the risks in the project and the second question talks about mitigating uh, the risks now you can if you just think of each question individually under the first question you will identify some risk and under the second question you will mitigate some risk but when you plan your answer you need to mitigate the risk that you have actually identified in the first place otherwise you will get partial marks or even or might even get no marks for mitigating the risk so for example uh, in uh, when you have identified you have identified market risk but when you are mitigating you have mitigated credit risk so in that case you might get partial marks because you haven't yet identified credit risk in the first place so you uh, so you need to plan your answer think of risk that you can identify as well as mitigate and then just divide the content between the different uh, sub questions so that's why planning is very important for cp1 paper 2 now again some of the tips that i gave earlier are equally relevant here in terms of uh, actually tailoring your points to suit the question and uh, again since uh, the case study uh, will give you sufficient background material understand that all of it is important make sure you keep the keywords in mind uh, some of the ones which i just discussed and if it's there it's there for a reason so understand the entire background material very well and um, create a mind map uh, and get in the shoes of the person or the company that's been talked about in the question and try to understand whatever problem uh, is being given out laid out in the questions and what could be the solution now uh, for cp1 paper 2 particularly both breadth and depth of ideas is important so uh, in terms of breadth you can use the checklists that you have already created or you can use the background material to give you some ideas on what could be the uh, po various pointers that you need to include and then when it actually comes to writing you can use your knowledge to actually add depth to the each of the pointers that you have written also um say you are faced with an uh, unfamiliar product or a unfamiliar line of business do not panic thinking okay the entire case study is built on an unfamiliar product so um okay so sorry so do not panic thinking that the entire uh, uh, case study is based on an unfamiliar product so now my entire case study might be wasted no since uh, it's a case study and background material is there so uh, ideally all of the information that you need to uh, write that question it's already included in the background material so just read the background material a couple of times and take some time to think and you will have the answer you just need to structure your answer and use the concept that have already that you have already studied in cp1 and just apply both of them to reproduce the answer okay so um so that was uh, something from my cp1 experience and i think uh, i have a few questions in the chat box so i'll go through them now okay so in terms of the past papers so um, for cp1 paper 2 since that was introduced recently around 2020 we won't get a lot of questions for cp1 paper 2 specifically so like case study based questions so definitely do uh, as as many papers as you get for cp1 paper 2 now for cp1 paper 1 you'll get a lot of questions because initially both the uh, paper 1 and paper 2 were structured uh, similar to that so for cp1 paper 1 you will get a lot of questions available in the uh, uh, revision notes so i you should at least go back uh, 10 sessions uh, to uh, get an idea of the pattern of uh, the questions and to understand how to structure your answers i mean 10 uh, study session should be uh, an extreme minimum yes so uh, given uh, there's a time constraint 
definitely giving the right points is more important because uh, there's a good chance that uh, you will at least get a uh, half a uh, half a mark for each point say it's if it's a discuss or describe and you might even get full points if it's a list or state question so uh, even if there's a time constraint uh, do write the points that you think is applicable to that answer even if you do not have the uh, sufficient time to you know actually add depth to each of the answers so yes paper a and paper b have equal weightage in the sense that uh, as i mentioned earlier the scores for the two will be aggregated you do not have to score a minimum marks on either of the paper so in terms of weightage both paper will have equal weightage um well uh, i uh, i have a few friends who have taken cp1 from iei as, as well and uh, we uh, we did not see a lot of difference in terms of uh, so uh, certainly there's no difference in terms of the study material that's there and uh, and i have i have also personally solved uh, iei exam papers during my exam because i wanted to get a good reference uh, so i did not see a lot of difference in terms of the exam papers as well and so i i don't feel that uh, there's any such thing as it's what's easier it might happen that for that particular session the exam person uh, one paper might be difficult and one paper might be easy but otherwise in general i do not see that there's a significant difference in terms of uh, any one institute being easier over the other for cp1 uh so suggestions on how to revise such a vast syllabus a week before the exam so uh again uh, definitely it's too huge a syllabus to revise the entire thing before exam so uh, uh th those checklists will really come in handy at this point so go through the entire checklist that you have created make sure that you have those on your fingertips and uh, you can also use so at the end of each chapter there's a summary page so you can use those summaries of all the chapters as a quick refresher for what's included in each chapter and what you can do is so say uh, you are working in any particular domain and you are already comfortable with that area so for example i since i was working in the gi domain i was quite comfortable with the gi products so my uh, study was focused more on life insurance and pension products so you could do something like that you can identify the areas where you are weak at and um, uh and try to uh, co recover those but again at the same time don't get stuck on any particular topic because uh, uh let me tell you across the two papers usually uh, the institute co covers all the topics quite well so do not uh, get stuck with any particular topic it's more important that you study the range of topics and understand the range of topics so you can prepare your own checklist or what you can do uh, something that i have a habit of doing when i solve the revision notes some questions that i see that i find particularly important or uh, which i believe uh, uh, is something that can help me structure my answers i tend to mark those questions and bef right before exams uh, uh, in the few days before exams i only revise those particular questions to get in the flow of those particular topics so you can do something like that so since the entire uh, syllabus revision will not be possible you can do some selective study at this point to focus on areas which you feel are more important if someone has scored 54 what advice will give for next attempt so uh, again it will depend on the uh, pass mark for each session uh, the, the institute tends to uh, kind of uh, vary that given the uh, complexity of the paper and uh, how the students have performed in that exam so um, i think for the next attempt uh, since uh, since the first attempt has gone quite decent for the next attempt focus on the areas where you felt that you got stuck for example those particular questions uh, were those a problem because you couldn't structure your answer or did you like run out of time or were there any particular areas where you were lacking knowledge so identify your weaknesses identify the areas where you felt like you could have performed better and work on those areas and uh, 
i am sure uh, that b- by the second attempt you you got a good idea of what to expect from the paper and how to so now you need to just revise the entire content so make use of that time and just revise the entire content while focusing on the areas that are important and uh, you think like you need more time on and i think your next attempt should be fine so uh, tips on how to structure your study journey for cp1 so again this could uh, vary uh, quite a bit between different people given that cp1 is a different kind of paper so uh, personally uh, i like to be familiar with the concepts uh, that's been introduced so i usually tend to go through the entire co reading once and uh, while doing that even i did not have a lot of time for the paper so while going through that uh, i usually just brushed around the topics which were already familiar to me uh, such as the gi ones and focused more on the topics which were new to me and once i had the entire co reading uh, um, understood then i moved on to solve the past exam papers and again the past exam papers become much more important for cp1 so make sure that you have a substantial amount of time set aside for past exam papers because just having the knowledge will not uh, help, uh, will is not sufficient to pass the exam you need to understand how to apply the knowledge that you have gained through the study material after completing past papers revision booklets material what should be the priority in going through these again um so again as mentioned before if you have marked any particular uh, uh, areas or any questions that you feel that are very important or or you need some more time on focus on them uh, or otherwise uh, if, depending on how much time is left if a, a, if a very small amount of time is left i'll uh, i'll suggest you to give more preference to past papers because it uh, because those are a good uh, way of revising the topics which are actually important and which tend to re- uh, reoccur between alternating exam sessions so if some only some time is left then focus on past papers but if you do have sufficient time on your hand you can uh, go ahead and uh, revise some key areas from the study material as well or go through each of the summary pages do we need to know modeling for cp1 or any programming or coding la- knowledge absolutely no so uh, cp for cp1 uh, you do not need to know anything related to programming or coding so both the papers are based on ms word and in fact uh, it does not it, it's not a calculation intensive paper at all so it's not like uh, so the usual problems that candidates ne- uh, all usually face in terms of writing the formula in an online exam uh you won't you ideally wouldn't get any such problem for cp1 because uh, it's mostly a very theoretical kind of paper and you just need to write down your answers and uh modeling so no you do not need to know any technical modeling as such so it's not like you need to know any pricing model or you have you must have worked on any model as such whatever basics they have introduced in the course so in terms of like for any model you need data you need assumptions and uh, you need to define the process uh, whatever material is there that's all you need to know for the exam you do not need to have any external technical modeling knowledge how can you tackle long questions where we have limited pointers so um so so i so it's not like for each pointer there's a one mark uh, because for example some pointers that are very important to the uh, particular question being asked they might actually have two two and a half marks so uh, so uh, w- when you have read the question carefully think of all the pointers that you can which you think are apt to the question and uh firstly list down all the pointers and if you think that you've exhausted the pointers and then uh, uh discuss sufficiently on each of the pointers so that even if a particular pointer has two two and a half marks you will get that entire marks so you won't lose out just because you have not listed down a lot of points so um, as i said uh tailoring your answer to the question is more important in cp1 instead of the actual content you just reproduce so uh, as long as the pointers that you produce are already relevant uh, and important uh, it shouldn't be a problem and it's actually for those long questions that i suggested creating a ch- checklist so that you do not run out of pointers under the exam scenario 
how you have used your planning time for paper 2 so uh, so i set aside some time for each case study uh, it's not like i uh, took the entire 45 minutes in one go uh, for my entire paper but again this is something personal this uh, this is something that you need to decide when you are solving your past exam papers for cp1 paper 2 and understand what works well for you so i uh, went through the care, first case study read it a couple of times understood the entire information being presented uh, made a note of the keywords that are being highlighted in the questions and then i let i uh, set aside some time because uh, to uh, help me structure each of the sub question within the case study and once i was done with the entire case study then i moved on to case study 2 and repeated the same process how many months you studied be honest and how many hours per day so um uh so uh, i studied uh, in the uh, i think september session where usually you get some less time to study for the exam uh and um with work so uh so it's not like i had a lot of time on my plate uh, to uh, study for the entire exam and to be honest i was initially i did feel a bit overwhelmed with the content that was there for cp1 uh, when the material came in so uh, uh so i had to plan my entire study accordingly so i studied for about 2 uh, and a half to 3 months and uh, hours per day uh, so uh, so i tried to be consistent it, it's very important with cp1 do not lose touch of the subject because it's so vast if you don't study for a week you will just lose the entire flow so being consistent is very important here so uh, i made sure that i studied every day even even if it was a hectic work day i tried to set aside some time in the morning or in the night to study uh, it, it could it could just be a couple of hours every day and then uh, and then you kind of catch up over the weekends so but make sure you study every day so yeah that's what i did somewhere around 2 to 3 hours uh, on the weekdays and in the weekends i would try to catch up uh, and take out more study time or would solve past papers and would like study for like 6 to 7 hours but uh, that that again that's person to person uh, and you need to find out what works well for you uh, and this is something um, so uh, when you so planning is exact, actually very important so when you start your uh, studying for your cp1 have a plan in mind uh, so it's too late for the this session but any time uh, make a plan in mind okay you plan to finish uh, this course by this date and then you plan to uh, solve the past exam papers by this date and then you plan to revise by this date so and if you feel like you're lagging behind it's important to catch up to that and but do not panic um, you can uh, always like uh, focus or uh, on the more important things or study the selective things given the amount of content that's there so do not need to panic but make sure that you're consistent and you try to stick to your plan so be a bit disciplined with cp1 how to structure ideas for paper 2 since a lot of questions will be for 10 to 15 marks and we need to tend to only have 5 to 6 ideas to write so um uh it's actually not the case that just because it's a case study the uh, questions will have uh, higher marks no uh, as i said for each case study you have about 5 to 6 questions so uh, so for the, if then in the entire paper you have about 10 to 12 uh, questions uh, not all of it will be of high marks some will be of um, so it will be kind of be uh, evenly distributed some questions will be of smaller marks and those will be uh, like straight forward applications for example uh, identify some of the risk in the project or mitigate some of the risk in the project uh, but then some questions which where you will need to think through and um, write more so yeah for those questions um, uh, elaborate on the points that you have already written down and uh, make sure that you include whatever uh, knowledge you feel is actually applicable to that particular question and also give examples if you're talking about something give example so for uh, so uh, uh, so for example if you need to uh, identify the risk uh, that uh, that's there in a project don't just write credit risk give an example of how credit risk might arise for example uh, uh, it might happen that uh, that one of the uh, 
person to uh, whom money has been lended uh, is not able to return the money so that's how credit risk is arising so give examples uh, with your points and those will not only help to uh, achieve more marks but it will actually go on uh, to make the examiner show that you actually understand the uh, answer that you have reproduced so uh, give examples with your points it will help to elaborate your answer as well and uh, say you you are very desperate to write down more pointers then since there is no negative marking in, in any of the papers there is no harm in writing down points even if you feel that okay it might not be that relevant but you just need to write down some points for the sake of marks so uh, so it, 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 there's no harm in writing those points but try to move them towards the end so that uh, the more important points are considered first and um, with those points uh, do not spend a lot of time on those points since you anyway don't think that they're very relevant just list them down or state them down and then move on to the next question and uh, if and again don't get stuck in, on any particular question just because you are trying to think uh, very thorough with that question move on to the next question and come to those questions towards the end keep marking those questions where you feel like you need to add more content and come to those questions towards the end this is something which can be easily done in an online exam format so come to those questions towards the end and then write whatever you want to add in there but do not get stuck on any particular question you will face a uh, time management issues with uh, cp1 both the papers if you get stuck on any particular question for too long does clearing cp2 and 3 before attempting cp1 have an advantage is it better to give other cp papers before attempting cp1 so personally i did take both cp2 and 3 before attempting cp1 but i did not uh, feel like that i gained any advantage simply because i took the cp2 and 3 exams this is because all the three cp papers they are very different in terms of the uh, in terms of their curriculum and the skill that they are trying to test CP2 is completely about uh, modeling uh, and like um, uh, modeling and like presenting your uh, model in a format that's understandable to all and CP3 is all about communication so uh, and CP2 and 3 no there's no knowledge material in CP2 and 3 as such so it's not like uh, that uh, you will gain an uh, an advantage from a knowledge point of view uh, you might feel uh, uh, kind of psychological advantage in the sense that you have already taken two cp cp level exams so you feel you might be able to crack cp1 as well but otherwise there there's no uh, at significant advantage that you get uh, from clearing two and three first you can go with them in any order would it be better to attempt cp1 without work experience with full time study or with work um uh so that's a bit tricky because uh, uh because for cp1 ideally the content is vast so you might think that okay when you're not working you get a lot of time to study cp1 so that helps but with cp1 since you, uh, since there's a need to understand the general business environment and the and the basics of the various financial products work experience might come in handy there because uh, since you're already working you understand how things work in general you understand the basic words like premium and risk and claims and uh how those those combine to become a project and how, or how a project is priced so um those might come in handy so uh, ideally both uh, both with work or without work scenarios have their own advantages um so that depends on you how you plan your entire study journey and um so if you have taken all the previous exams and you are left with your uh, and you're only left with your cp and higher order exams like sp and sa in that case i'll suggest you to take cp1 uh, even though you haven't started work because uh, for sp level exams you need to decide which course you want to take and that that might uh, be very well related to your work so in that case go ahead with cp1 should we focus more on the chapters with more weightage for last revision or go through all chapters 
giving less time no definitely prefer the chapters with more weightage because uh, as i mentioned earlier there are some recurring topics and uh, if you have solved the past exam papers you will understand this that there are recurring topics and recurring questions which you can very well expect throughout the exam so do focus more on the chapters with uh, more weightage but uh, it's not like completely omit the other uh, other chapters uh, once you have understood the entire material focus more on the chapters with more weightage i think we don't have any further questions meenadi thank you so much for this session and uh, we have really gained lot of uh, knowledge about how we can clear cp1 thank you so much um yeah thank you so much for this session thank you shivangi uh, so i wish you all a very good luck for your exams and um, do, uh, do not panic do not stress uh, looking at the uh, syllabus it's about uh, application and understanding so uh, just give your best and it's completely all right and so and i do not want to sound cliched but even if you fail you will gain something out of it your next attempt will definitely go much better given that you will have more time so there's nothing to lose so all the very best Thank you. Thank you.